Hello, I just want to share this. Hello, the dogs have been for a walk and they had to get washed. They were full of mud right up to their tum tums, so they're cold. Jackets on. Now, I want to share this just so you know. When um, my first husband asked me to move out, it pushed me into God's corner. Same as when my daughter persecuted me, pushed me into God's corner. My idols turned on me, they will turn on you. Anyway, this is the book that I was writing in. There is some good stuff, and I have shared it before. Um, so I just want to show you the date, 2004. 16 years ago. I was hearing the Lord quite clearly. Um, I now realise I was scribing. The first, I tell you what, the first thing, I wonder if it's in here, the first thing I ever scribed, like heard the Lord say, was, he woke me in the morning and he told me a poem. I heard it in my spirit and then I wrote it up. It's called Adultery. I don't think we're going to find it. It's already in the testimony. Wouldn't it be lovely if I found it? Like, okay, so, and so it's called Adultery and as I heard it, my heart finally received the revelation that the Lord had been trying very hard to show me. He had given me dreams plus different circumstances had pointed to my husband being in adultery prior to him asking me to leave. But I didn't want to believe it because he was my idol. What you need to learn from this is when you have an idol you guard it with your life. You guard it with your life because if that idol falls, how do you stand? You're on sand, you fall, unless you turn to the Lord, which is what I did and I heard him. Here we go. So this is me, um, pretty much, I'm pretty sure that these weren't, these have been rewritten because they're just way too neat for me to have scribed them. But they're from the Lord and they were poems. So back then, I only scribed poems. I'll share this and then I'm going to share a word for New Zealand. Adultery. This is straight from the Lord. Adultery. It has a deep dark ocean and a lost and lonely sea. It has walnuts and wrinkles, an orange hull with a mouldy load. It's a golden bay with a white picket fence, a lover boy with red roses, a joyless day gone past. See la rest. Look, let me read some poems to you, eh? This is the love I had for God. <laughs> I love them. The Lord turned back the covers. He made way for the waves. His mighty hand was upon me, and I had to agree. The promise in a rainbow, in the place of a gift, a delight for the picking, a chance to give. Is my life surrendered? Lie flat at your throne. May you replace wounding with this new found home. An orchard, a garden, a job to be done, a place for the making, a wine to be won. My hand has a chance, my seeking a place. Oh my God, you had mercy, and I'm seeking your face.
my plate is running over. <laughs> Relay the right information. Make sure it's correct. Excite a celebration. This, these are prophetic. I just shared that song. Celebrate good times. Excite a celebration at the table where we met. The time for pain is over. The food is running down. The tip is sharp and coasting to each to reach every nation town. Right, I'm just gonna leave it there. If you look back in my posts <clears throat> nearly a year and a half ago, I shared. Now this is stuck to the back of the box because that's how long ago I got it. It's not mine. I didn't write it. I shared um, the ministry of Anita Alexander. And her husband, Sasha Alexander, had revival meetings here in Christchurch, New Zealand, in 1997, the year that my son was conceived. And I chose God over my husband that year. I had had my call to the Māori people, and I was doing a Māori language course. I have shared the testimony, I believe, but I was kicked off the course at the end because the Lord had told me that I couldn't declare my papa back to the gods in the Whadanui. He woke me in the morning and he said, I just knew I, I couldn't do it. He saved me from doing this. And I had to go into a meeting and say I wasn't willing to do it because of my faith. And that the Treaty of Waitangi protected my faith, as it also protects the Māori customs, which is they have every right to practice and their spirituality. It also cites that it protects the Catholicism, um, Anglicans, Presbyterians and Wesleyans and I, I said I was a Wesleyan close enough and that I would recite 130 gods in the classroom but I would not put my grandparents name at the beginning and say that they fucked the gods and she kicked me out of the course. And she used the lame excuse it was because I was a Pākehā and she shouldn't have allowed me in the course. God placed me in that course. They had to receive me into that course because I was in a grammatical course for Europeans and it folded and this was a course was full immersion called Te Atarangi and I loved the time I spent there and I didn't care that I didn't get my ticket and it's my testimony that same year I was at these meetings with Sasha Alexander and he was shaking up the religious spirits in Christchurch and this prophecy was given to me by someone who had photocopied it so I'll tell you the date. It came from Christchurch Bible College on the 14th of July 1982. So I got it in 1997 and I've stuck it in my book. I don't know who, who received it, it's just the Bible College which I think is really nice because there's no there's no glory there is no glory in, the, in hearing God the glory is to him that he can even speak to us that he can redeem us and speak to us 
prophecy for Christchurch. As Jerusalem was to Israel, so this city shall be to this nation. As Israel was to the ancient world, so this nation shall be to the surrounding nations. I am going to raise the sound of the trumpet in the city, and then shall raise the sound of my trumpets throughout this nation. These shall be my heralds. To these men I shall give extraordinary power and authority. I shall make them men of great courage. I will raise up my Gideons, men of naught to great power and authority. They shall be like Jeremiah. Oh my goodness. When I was told to go silent, it was the night that the Lord gave me a dream where I went into the theatre of Jeremiah. I had seen Jeremiah about six months before. I saw outside of my caravan in the walkway. I saw, now the Lord showed me the Antichrist and the false prophet, but it was a really strange way to show me. The Antichrist was Brad Pitt, the charismatic Brad Pitt, in everyday working man's clothes, and there's revelation in that. But I do also remember I turned my head, and just down there by that compartment, I saw, and the Lord showed, told me it was Jeremiah, sort of in the shadows, he was on his way, Jeremiah, and then... About six weeks ago, the Lord told me to go silent after he had given me that dream that I was in the theatre of Jeremiah. This was this is where we are at. So now Jeremiah is mentioned in this. So the Lord's leading me, to, reminding me. I, I I just I didn't remember that. I will raise up my Gideons, men of naught, and they shall be hated by all false believers. We'll just read back Jeremiah. And I will raise up my Gideons, men of naught, great power and authority. They shall be like Jeremiah, the most hated of men. Hmm. They shall be hated by all false believers, by rulers of nations, by civic authorities, by the people, and by members of their own families. Yet I shall protect them, and nothing shall prevent them from accomplishing the tasks to which I set them. Wherever they go, the heavens will open, and the power of God will descend. Many signs and wonders will confirm that I have sent them. Many shall come to know the Lord. <laughs> it is not by chance this city called Christ Church. I put it into the hearts of the founding fathers of the city to call it Christ Church because I knew that the fullness of time I would make it the Jerusalem of this land. This is before I had my dream for the Māori people. And it's set in Christ church and I can't do it because it's miraculous I choose the things that are naught to confound the wise I they will often be men who thought they would never amount to much for their God but I have been reserving them for such a time as this I shall raise them up they shall be mighty in the Lord. They shall do great exploits for me. They shall accomplish the work to which I have set them. Wherever my trumpets go, I shall cause both high and low to tremble. Rulers, people in authority, both civic 
and spiritual, all people shall tremble. Such will be the power and the authority I shall give them. They shall encourage my people mightily. They shall put a new heart into my people. They shall put courage into my people. My people shall continue the work of my trumpets. This is the last and end time revival for which many have longed, many have prayed for, some nearly their whole lifetime. Their prayers shall soon be answered. Great shall be the joy in this last outpouring of my Holy Spirit before my Son returns to this earth in all his glory. Oh, Lord.